Hello everybody and welcome. This is Gretchen Heidel here tonight on Facebook Live. It is Monday on June 8th and I'm talking about the week ahead, the week coming, so from June 8th uh, to June 14th. And if you're watching Facebook Live tonight, welcome. Also, you can watch it on the replay and as well on my Facebook, on my YouTube channel. So welcome everybody who's joining tonight. Thank you so much. Please make sure you like and share and post your astrological sign because I love to hear all about uh, what your sign you are. Now, we're going to be talking a lot about the sign of Pisces tonight. Uh, Pisces energy is very active and it's also a very different energy than we have uh, from the previous week. I mean, it's a very, very different energy. Last week, we had a lot of contention. We had Mars was very active. Mars will continue to be active this week, but it's a different uh, sort of flavor and a different type of energy. So welcome everybody. Hey Teresa, welcome. Uh, thank you everybody for saying hi. Oh Amy, Pisces, hey this might be your week Amy. Uh, this is a good Pisces week and <laughs> glad to be here. That's great. I'm, I'm really looking forward to talking to everybody tonight. We have a lot of astrological energy um, and let's see, I was just going to Oh shoot, I, I printed out a chart and I was going to show you guys a chart, but hey, welcome Doreen, good evening, um, and hi everybody who is joining Doreen Cancer, yes, welcome, a lot of water signs already, Colette's a Capricorn, okay, so we have a water, we have a lot of water signs and some earth signs, so anyway, so Pisces is very active this week, and it's a very different energy than last week. Not to say that it can't still be contentious because we have a lot of stuff going on for sure um, that's contentious. Uh, but, you know, it's sort of the ripple effects now. It's not like the direct hit. And I, if you guys remember from last week, I was telling you guys that after the full moon lunar eclipse, which happened on Friday, uh, that that would be kind of like the tipping point of sort of the violence in a way. And in fact, um, a lot of the violence that we were experiencing across the country, a lot of the looting and the different things that were happening, I won't say it stopped, but it definitely ramped down. And there were a lot more peaceful protests, which was great uh, this weekend, and uh, marching and all kinds of stuff and more positive interactions uh, with police officers, different things. So. Um, so that was good. So that was really, really important. Um, <laughs> Brian said I'm a Capricorn, but not. Hey, how you doing, Brian? Um, and Lori, Pisces, yes. Um, Teresa said I don't have much Pisces in my chart, but apparently you have uh, the true note in Pisces. Well, that's a big thing. Um, Kirsten is Capricorn. Somebody else posted here. Hey. Oh, Nora. Hey, uh, Leo. Uh, she's my, so far, my only um, fire sign. Brian, it would be interesting to know um, the uh, other things that are in your chart because sometimes when people only have one sign, like sometimes they just have one sign as far as their birth sign, their sun sign. And then that's it. They only have that one. And then they don't, they, they often will come to me and they'll say, I don't really feel like I'm a, Capricorn or Pisces or something. Um, and so that's really what happens if you only have one sign in the sun sign and you don't have other signs. Like I, I, I'm an Aries, but I have five signs in Aries. So I kind of feel like an Aries. <laughs> so that that's kind of what happens, Brian. So it'd be interesting to, you know, if you ever saw your birth chart to see if you have other planets also in Capricorn, um, or if it's just that one sign. Um, uh, let's see. There's a lot of people on tonight. Uh, Marianne, hey, how you doing? Naomi, Sagittarius, Corbin, still a Scorpio. <laughs> I like that. And my mom, Rita, is on tonight. Hi, how you doing? Um, so we have we have some energy going on, but it's not as intense. So. I'm only saying yes because a lot of that intensity was a lot. I mean, it was just, it was a lot, you know, um, it's not to say it wasn't warranted or, you know, whatever, but it's just, it was a lot of energy and it was very hard to watch, you know, those images um, on screen and, and uh, the, the murder uh, of George Floyd and all those things. It was just a lot. It was all a lot. And energetically, we were all definitely feeling it. And then th last week, things were ramping, 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 ramping up when we had that full moon in Sagittarius on Friday. 
and then like I said it was going to come down and we have already seen a little bit of lessening I won't say it's totally gone but we've seen more peacefulness and the reason for that is Pisces and Neptune now we talked a lot about Pisces and Neptune last week but I want to go deeper a deeper dive because I focused a lot about on Mars last week and Mars is the god of war and that was really causing a lot of this tension and a lot of this energy uh, and now we're going to be um, we're going to be switching over to a more Piscean. It's not to say that Pisces can't be edgy, uh, but it's just saying that it's a gentler energy. Amir Taurus, uh, Marianne Aries. Hello, Jenny. Uh, I still remain a Gemini. I love that. <laughs> um, hola, Monica. Um, welcome. And uh, yes, Monica, um, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to get to your question uh I try to get on every Monday night. I've been doing it 8.50 to 9 p.m. every Monday night. So I'm glad you were able to catch me live, but you can always watch the replay. That's cool, too. Nigel, we're going to be talking about Pisces Moon. Um, uh, Brian said, I must be busy. Yes, Chelsea, Sagittarius, awesome. Welcome, everybody. So let's get started. So this week is starts out actually pretty quietly. Um, Thankfully, uh, I think we could all use a little bit of an energetic break right now. So um, we're starting out a little bit more quietly. Uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we start getting into some back to that old, um, I've been talking about this for a while, the love detox that we're in, and that's Venus retrograde. Now, Venus retrograde is going to be making three very mild, it's very mild on Wednesday and Thursday between Wednesday and Thursday, it's going to make three uh, planetary um, things. And I, when I say mild, they're really astrologically mild. So on Wednesday, uh, Venus is going to be sesquisquare, pronounce that 10 times really fast, Pluto. So that can be a power struggle with love, and that can be something kind of going on in relationships. And then it's going to be forming a semi-sextile to Uranus on Thursday, and it's going to be forming a sextile to Chiron also on Thursday, so on the 10th and on the 11th of this coming week in June. What does that mean in speaking in English? Because <laughs> sometimes people are like, what the heck is she saying? Uh, soon moon trine, sun, square, whatever. Um, basically what that is, is what I'm saying is Venus is going to highlight Pluto, Chiron, and Uranus. So something kind of is going to come up Wednesday, Thursday. We might hear from somebody out of the blue. Uh, an old lover, a past flame, uh, some kind of a thing, run into someone at the grocery store behind our masks. <laughs> uh, and you ever see people kind of looking at you at the grocery store with behind those masks, kind of like, oh, who's, you know, who is she? Um, it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, but, you know, um, something could come out of the blue. We could get some sudden or unexpected news uh, from our loved one. Uh, our loved one could be acting a little erratically if we have a loved one, that is. I mean, if we have a special someone, but sometimes, see, when we talk about the love detox and we're still in the middle of it, what do I call, what do I call the love detox? I call uh, Venus retrograde the love detox because it's retrograde. And so we're supposed to be sorting out, sorting through who we love. And that could even be friends. It doesn't have to be a partner, a life partner. Um, it could be a friend. It could be, uh, you know, just someone in your life that you love, you know, somebody that you care about. And we're kind of sorting through all of that. It's it's like, are we, you know, um, in a one-way relationship? Are we getting our needs met? What is happening? That's all the love detox stuff that's coming up. And also, what is our value? ourselves, our true value, or are you a high value man, or are you a high value woman, doesn't matter. Um, are people treating you high value and all that? That's basically the love detox. Amy, oh my goodness, I haven't seen you in forever. Sagittarius to a T, yes you are. <laughs> Stacy Jean, hello. Uh, Nora, uh, she, <laughs> she said, oh God, please no more exes, laugh out loud. That's hilarious, Nora, I like that. Yeah, I mean, we've been now in the love detox for a while, okay? So uh, we have a few more weeks left, okay? So it started on May 13th and it's gonna be going till June 25th, okay? So 
what is that, two, two and a half more weeks left of the love detox. So all this is getting sorted out. And it is a time where there's breakups or we could have a falling out with a friend or we could have some kind of a thing. But, but we're kind of like trying to kind of connect with all that stuff now. So Wednesday and Thursday of this week, we're going to be back in that love detox again. So what do you do? Okay, like people ask me, like, what do I do when I know an energy is coming? Well, let's say your your partner at that time on Wednesday and Thursday is annoying the crap out of you. <laughs> you know, they're just doing all the things to push your red hot buttons or they're being like erratic or or un inconsistent. You know, if it's a hot, cold relationship, maybe they're being inconsistent. And so when we know that something like this is coming, obviously that's not the time to have the big serious talk like what 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 are we doing here, you know? What you know, are we in a committed relationship? That's not the time to have that talk, okay? Because when the planetary energy is very active like that, that can definitely definitely uh be something that can kind of throw us off, put us into a fight or, you know, our partner could be edgy and and we're just like stepping on a landmine and something's not going right. So we want to kind of make sure that we're just, you know, staying in a safe zone or safe territory. I do say if we can't hold back, we can't contain ourselves and we're just going to go for it. That's a time where there's a lot of additional energy. Who knows? You know, maybe conflict could help you. I mean, sometimes when we play things too safe, uh, we don't get the results that we want. But I would say, right when you're in the in the thick of it, uh, Wednesday and Thursday this week, being doing that love, you know, trying to put definition around things and trying to find out, like, what do we mean to each other? Or should we continue with our marriage? Or, or you know, um, you've been a crappy friend to me or whatever thing that we're doing on Wednesday and Thursday. Our people all around are going to be a little bit more on edge and a little bit more um, kind of nitpicky picky and things like that. Chiron is very active here. So we do, when Chiron's active, Chiron is the dwarf planet that basically uh, rules over something that needs to be healed. So an old, you know, feelings could come up or an old heartbreak or, you know, some kind of older thing that could come up around Wednesday and Thursday that we need to resolve or we need to uh, kind of experience again or sort of heal up that layer. We'll have an opportunity here to heal up the layer. So I would just say, just kind of embrace it. You know, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to heal up a layer, sometimes those layers are brought up for good reason. Um, uh, <laughs> Brian said, I'm changing my birthday. Um, <laughs> you won't, you want to be in the love. Yes. Trina. Hello. Welcome. So thank you so much for joining. Well, like, and share, like, and share, like, and share. Definitely, uh, share this post because people need the love right now. We're talking about love. Um, people need love. So Right now we have we have some unexpected or erratic behavior that could happen around that Wednesday, Thursday, even Tuesday, starting in Tuesday time frame because it's really early in the day on on uh, Wednesday the tenth that this starts. So we could even start feeling it tomorrow, and uh, people might be acting a little cray cray right now, a little erratic or a little like not like themselves, um, especially with uh, Venus retrograde in Gemini and then Chiron is going to be in Aries and then even also highlighting Uranus, which is in Taurus. That's like a crazy mix there, you know. <laughs> Anytime you put you put Gemini and and uh, Aries in a room together, there's going to be crazy things that happen. And then you put Uranus, which Uranus is in Taurus, which is more conservative, but Uranus is also uh, the wild card. So we have some wild things happening. Uh, presuming this, uh, Jenny, I don't know if you missed that part of the. I was just saying that this can be all love relationships, not just romantic partnerships. This can be family. This could be friends. Anything that involves love, you know. If, um, if you care about your family and you love them, then yes, this could be, this could be a love thing. <laughs> um, Trina said, uh, and we just went through the full moon crazies and, um, Andrea said, I can't believe Venus is still retrograde. It has felt so long. Yes, it has been long, uh, but luckily it only happens once every 18 months that Venus goes retrograde. The love detox only happens once every 18 months. So we have, yes, it's a concentrated, you know, time frame since May 13th. It's been retrograde, but 
we still have more time left in the retrograde and we're sorting out if the love is right for us, if we're feeling the love, if we, you know, are, are in touch with our right partner. And if you're single and you're looking for some, somebody to love, you know, this might be a good time to kind of press the pause button on, on dating because dating, trying to meet new people during Venus retrograde is a little hard, especially since next week on the 18th starts Mercury retrograde. So for one week between uh, June uh, 18th and June 25th, for one week, both, both Mercury is going to be retrograde in Cancer and Venus is going to be retrograde simultaneously in Gemini. So when somebody, uh, Nora said, um, oh no, not more exes during that week, it could be thick with exes. <laughs> And so why do I say exes? Some people might be uh, curious as to why I'm saying exes because retrogrades think retro, okay? Uh, been there, done that. Um, they tend to come back. People from the past come back. Friendships can come back. Things can happen. So not only can we have breakups or different types of things, but we can also have uh, the pre, uh, you know, previous uh, relationships come back. And I always say an ex is an ex for a reason. Um, sometimes ex, they, they, the, the guideline in astrology is that if you, if there's all these retrogrades happening, the only person that you should really be entertaining is an ex it, because that has the best shot of working. Like in other words, new uh, associations, new partnerships have a very hard time getting their feet going, um, you know, and getting traction, uh, during this time. So I always tell people if you're on dating apps or whatever, you might just want to hit that pause button and, uh, just wait uh, until at least these retrogrades are over specifically Venus retrograde, the love detox and the upcoming retrograde between Mercury, um, as well. <laughs> Trina said, I will stay home. And Almir said, ah, make it stop. I know I can't make it stop, but this is all good learning. Um, the reason for retrogrades, I always say, um, if you guys, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, where you go to a cardiologist and you have a stress test and you have to walk on a treadmill to test your heart rate and see if it can really sustain, you know, exertion and all this stuff. Well, it's kind of like a stress test to your love life. And, you know, this is a great time not only to be looking at your partner, what is your partner doing or your friend or your family member, like we said, but also um, how are we showing up for love? Are we open to love? Are we allowing the love in? You know, sometimes people, I see this all the time when I'm coaching my dating and relationship clients, that they have these partners that are like doing all this stuff. Um... I don't know, taking out the trash, getting flowers, doing the different things. And, and sometimes we push away those love things, um, especially, you know, I just said to service things, you know, as far as love language goes, maybe that's not your love language, but, but whatever. I mean, you know, we push away the love or we don't, we don't acknowledge love and let the love come in. So if someone wants to love us, are we open to letting them love us? And are we open to, um, you know, what are our blocks to love that we might have? You know, maybe it comes from having a difficult childhood or, you know, a parent that didn't show us much love. So, you know, surprisingly in dating and relationship coaching, I have a lot of people that I talk to about reprogramming how to love. Like, I mean, literally, we don't know how to do it sometimes. If we had a parent that wasn't really loving or parents that weren't really loving or demonstrative towards each other or towards us, we don't know how to love. And it feels very weird and awkward. You would think naturally, oh, you just give all the love. It's almost like you adopt a puppy and you're just going to love and love and love the puppy and the puppy's going to be fine, you know? It's like that type of thing where, you know, you find a partner that's all closed off and shut down and then it's like, I'm just going to just give them all the love and then they're going to bloom like a flower. Well, a lot of times that feels very um, funny and weird and awkward and they don't know how to accept the love and and so if you're if you're like that if you, if you're somebody that that wasn't really used to being loved yeah it's time to practice it's time to practice heart opening i have my heart my uh, heart crystal on tonight and it's time to practice that heart chakra opening 
and, and be able to accept love. So that's my sort of feeling about that. And then we have this big thing coming. Hello, everybody that's just joining. Welcome. We have this big thing coming um, in uh, the Mars and the Neptune uh, are coming together. Now, all of this was still active last week and it's getting closer and closer and closer. So the peak of it, the height of it is going to be on Saturday morning, 10, 13 a.m. Eastern time. That's going to be on Saturday, the 13th, June 13th. And I was talking about how this has really, really like was affecting. I showed you guys the map. This is still the map of last week, by the way. But, but this is Mars right here, this line, and this is Neptune, and they are both in Pisces. And this is Minneapolis, where George uh, Floyd uh, was murdered. And so these two are coming together in Pisces, and they're going to be together. They are going to be together right through Minneapolis here. Um, they're coming together in Pisces. And so it's interesting because... Neptune in Pisces is all about a dream. Now, it's interesting because Martin Luther King had a moon in Pisces, and he also had his Venus in Pisces. Um, and if you remember, his speech literally was about, you know, a dream, having a dream. What's the dream? And so that's what we want here. We want to harness. I talked a lot about last week about the sort of lower vibrational level of the violence and stuff because we were in the middle of that, the looting and the violence and everything that was happening. But what about the higher Achillean of Pisces or of Neptune? Um, I talked about how Neptune is the god of the ocean, god of the sea. Neptune currently right now is in Pisces and will continue to be in Pisces just to let you know all the way from 2012 to 2025. So it's a it's it's called a generational sort of transit when Neptune moves into an area it's in an area for a very long time. But currently in current times as we speak this last week and this week it's getting aspected by mars the god of war who is also in pisces now there's a lot of action there was a lot of aggression there was a lot of stuff that happened but also the higher achillean of pisces and of neptune is intuition and it's it's pursuing your dream it's pursuing creative it's like think of all the right brain activities and the right brain stuff Think uh, creativity, think music, think sculpting, poetry. In fact, the last time it was in Pisces um, for that period of time from, it was 1847 to 1862 during the period of Romanticism. In fact, the very, very first ever phonograph of a person's voice singing uh, was during that time in 1860 and that was the first known recording of a human being singing and Neptune has a very very strong uh, Neptune and Pisces Pisces in general has a very strong connection to music I personally have my moon in Pisces Martin Luther King had his moon in Pisces I know Nigel here on the recording his moons in Pisces we have a lot of um, uh, very strong creativity and I love to sing I love music and music uh, for Pisces folks is visceral like you can feel the music it's not like some music's on in the background you can feel the music and so so we're 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 fighting for a dream and there's that romanticism and a lot of thing, interesting things kind of happened back then. Uh, the very, very first ever women's right convention was 1848 when Neptune was in Pisces. And Martin, uh, I'm sorry, Abraham Lincoln uh, in 1857 started talking about the dream of, of abolishing slavery and equal rights for people. 1857 okay and we're still talking about this now so so um it's interesting because martin luther king when i looked at his chart and that was the chart i think i left over there on the printer uh but i don't want to get up and, and run over there <laughs> during during the broadcast but martin luther king had a very interesting he was a uh, he was a uh, capricorn by the way uh, with a Pisces moon and Venus in Pisces, um, but he had a squ he had a really interesting square uh, between the Pisces Venus. He had a square between Mars, okay, and then uh, Saturn. And so he was fighting for his dream. And Saturn is about being organized and having a plan. Mars is fighting for what you 
your dream and what you want and your aspirations and your desires and that Pisces is, is the dream itself. Pisces is the dream itself. So what do you dream about? What, 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 what inspires you? I mean, we're talking a lot about that Mars energy, but this is about acting and pursuing the dream. Okay. A lot of times we have a dream and we let it die. You know, or we say one day, one day, one day, I'll get to it. I'll get back to it. During the romanticism period of 1847 to uh, 1862, when the romanticism time frame was a little bigger than the, um, but the chunk of it, the major, major chunk of it was Neptune and Pisces, was very productive with art and and music and paintings and all different types of um, ways of expressing oneself, and so. How do you, what's your dream and, and are you going to pursue your dream or are you going to let your dream die? You know, I talk a lot to clients that say one day, one day, one day. Well, sometimes in life we don't get another day. I mean, we never kind of know. Um, and so maybe you wanted to pursue another thing that, that uh, Pisces is, is very well known for is spirituality. You know, being spiritual, being, um, it could be religious, but it's also a mystical spirituality, like, like a connection to the other side or, or to tarot cards or to, you know, some sort of thing. And so maybe you've always wanted to kind of pursue that more or just simply um, open up the consciousness, the you know, the 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 intuition. I'm um, referencing my third eye here. By the way, soda light is a wonderful. If you want to open your third eye chakra, which is the chakra that's in on the middle of your forehead, soda light is a wonderful uh, sh uh, third eye chakra opening stone. Um, I love it. It's S O D A L I T E soda light, and this is the color of indigo. Okay, so um, any other stone that would be color of indigo is a great, great uh, thing. So, what's your dream? What would you like to pursue? Make sure you post post below your astrological sign. Share, like, and share, like, and share. I always tell people if you want to pursue any kind of intuition type of work or if you always just let's say you always wanted to just enhance your own intuition the very very best thing you could do uh the top thing that i feel you can do is to is to meditate and so oh boy i know it's hard i mean especially when we're in gemini season likes to you know gemini likes to move around but pisces and neptune is all about getting in touch with that mystical side, that other side. It could be some form of religion. It could also be uh, just a knowing or a feeling, uh, talking to your angels, your spirit guides, and and whatever. But it's it's about learning how to trust yourself, and that's the other thing that that intuition. Uh, we have to learn how to trust ourselves. We have to learn how to trust our own intuition and our own gut feeling. Uh, you know, we even have language for it in our in our society. It's a gut feeling, and so that's that's in intuition. So uh, learning how to meditate is one of the big things. Now, um, uh, they have actually done brain studies, brain, you know, uh, PET scans on the brain of mediums. And it was a fascinating thing that they learned in this particular study is that mediums, um, when they were channeling and they were doing their readings during the PET scan, showed signs of their brain kind of being asleep. And so all the areas in the centers of the brain were actually highlighted that um, that were are also highlighted during meditation. So this is one of the very first things I talk to people about. I you know I say hey you know you want to you want to uh, ramp up your own intuition. You want to ramp up your own ability. You have to be able to go into this meditative state. I have been meditating since I was 16 years old, um, and. You know, people have asked me, I've done these big events where there's like 200 people, 300 people walking around and they say, how can you concentrate? How, you know, there's all this commotion and stuff. And I, I just can get into that space of that, you know, I have a Pisces moon, I just said, you know, and I can get into that space, but I've, I've had a, um, a real strong, uh, you know, loving of doing meditation. And it's called a meditational practice for a reason. It's not meditational perfection. I mean, has anybody heard of that phrase? No, you have a meditational practice where you just kind of learn how you get into your body. And 
all meditation is is just the ability to be in the now right here right now okay you're not tomorrow you're not yesterday you're not the day before you're not that da, da, da. and so you know it's just being here in the now and so it's it's uh, a practice and i'm being very simplistic in my explanation of it but that's basically all it is people um you know the biggest best advice i actually got uh recently from a friend of mine who is a trained and ongoing practicing buddhist and and he actually guides uh, some meditations and does some work with the local shambhala center which i want to have him on my show sometime because i think you guys would love him but he uh, talks about how when um, thoughts come in you greet them as visitors you know sometimes when we meditate we get a thought and it's like oh why are you here oh i can't be doing this i failed i'm a failure because i had a thought that's not the case. You just greet, greet them as a visitor. Thank you for coming, and then they go. Thank you for coming, and they go. Because we get thoughts. I mean, thoughts are, well, we can't judge a thought. We, you know, we judge, we tend to judge thoughts sometimes. Tiffany, yes. Pisces, yes, you are. Um, um, Andrea said, I read on a random post say that tonight's full moon eclipse is a good time for manifestation. Do you agree? Well, first of all, it's not tonight. It was already on Friday on the 5th of the full moon lunar eclipse. And eclipses are a time to release, let go. So that's, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because that's a great segue for my next thing when we talk about Pisces. Um, and Lindsay said, how long do you meditate every day? It really depends on my schedule, to be honest with you. Sometimes it's only five minutes and sometimes it's 20 to 30 minutes. It just depends on my schedule. Um, but I try minimally to do at least five minutes a day. And, and that's sometimes all I can do if I'm really busy and, and whatever, but it's, it's maintaining the practice. It's like a yoga practice. It's not called yoga perfection. It's called yoga practice. Meditational practice is all about that. And that's the best way because it, it opens up the pathways, the neuro pathways. I like science too. Don't get me wrong. Um, it opens the neuro pathways for being able to harness because we don't understand the brain. Let's face it. We don't even know a little, even like this much about our own brains. We're starting to learn, but, but science hasn't yet, uh, acknowledged that there is such a thing called a sixth sense or intuition or psychic ability or any of that stuff. And so this opens up the hearing and the feeling and the seeing and everybody receives their information differently when we talk about intuition everybody receives their information in a different way um but you you know as you if as you grow you can expand your repertoire you know i mean i would say pro primarily and predominantly i i'm clairvoyant so i started seeing the vision was the first thing that i got but i definitely have all of the abilities of being able to sense. I hear things, I sense things on my skin. I mean, you know, so, so if you want to enhance your own intuition and the other thing is, like I alluded to is trust. And so learning to trust yourself. How many times did we get the clue? Somebody's calling me. <laughs> Sorry about that. How many times do we get the clue? <clears throat> Gut feeling. I shouldn't trust this or I, I shouldn't uh, go with this person or I shouldn't buy this item or you know you get the gut feeling of something and then you reason it away reason it away logic is like up here okay I feel the intuition really comes in through our hearts and through our chakras okay our, our, um, our uh, third eye chakra and so that's the intuition piece of it um, heart math Institute uh, really has said that that the heart is this is the sensing okay is where how we sense and perceive information so definitely the heart the heart has its own like almost aura uh, that comes outside of our body it's a beautiful thing so I keep speaking of the heart chakra we got to make sure our heart chakra is really good and strong okay because we're in that love detox and we're a lot of times we're blocking our own love so we got to learn how to unblock our love and how to um, welcome love and how to how to be able to embrace love so um uh andrea had brought up a good point so um on saturday the 4th, 13th 
two kind of things are happening. Um, not only is Mars coming together with that Piscean, uh, Neptune, Pisces energy, okay, um, and they're going to be coming closer and closer and they, they peak on that day. And then what's going to happen is Mars will start to kind of move on because Mars moves faster than Neptune, obviously. Neptune's, you know, going to be in Pisces till 2025, so... Um, we have a long time uh, on that one. But we also have the last quarter, or sometimes it's also called the fourth quarter lunar cycle on that day. And that's coming on Saturday the 13th. So last week we had the full moon lunar eclipse, which is a time to release the energy. So when you go from full moon, right, it's the peak, peak height, big full moon, it, it loses its light, okay? And it starts to move towards the new moon because after the full moon's over done it's like it's done its peak cycle now it's coming down okay so it's losing the light so what do you want to lose what do you want to get rid of between the full moon and the new moon you're getting rid of things so I always talk about when when somebody asks me about what type of practices are good around the moon cycles you want to make sure that you're releasing and so we're going to have a midpoint in between that full moon and new moon and that's called the last quarter lunar cycle guess what that's in pisces too so we have a lot of pisces 22 degrees pisces and so um it's going to be really active this pisces neptune energy so if you are a pisces if you are a Cancer, a Scorpio, woo, you're going to be feeling this because all the water signs, right, will be activated. And the mutable signs, okay, the Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces, all the mutable signs will be activated as well. So if you're any of those signs, especially Virgo, because Virgo and Pisces are opposite of each other. So Virgos, pay attention, mom, because mom's a Virgo. <laughs> okay, and Kate said... You are preaching to my heart right now. Well, I'm so glad. Um, I've been extremely intuitive. I'm starting to really want to pursue it. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, your mouth dropped open when I was starting to talk about your Pisces. Awesome. Preach it. <laughs> and you're going to rewatch it again after it's over. That's that's a beautiful thing. I love that, Kate. Um, and so this is, I'm talking about, I'm talking about on the 12th and the 13th here. So the 13th, uh, we have the height of the lunar, fourth quarter lunar cycle. It's going to be happening overnight between Friday and Saturday at 2.24 a.m. Eastern time. And that's just the midpoint. It's where the moon, you know, is like half a moon. So on the left side, there's light. And on the right side, it's dark. That's called the lunar quarter cycle. Now, I, I always liken all of the moon's uh, tr uh, phases to planting gardens, okay, or, or being farming, because that's what the a Farmer's Almanac uh, does. They advise, you know, some of their some of their advice is astronomical, okay? So... That's basically where this comes from. So full moon, which we just had last Friday, we were we were peaked, okay? And um, that's when we harvest, okay? So that's the peak. That's when the fruit uh, on the tomato plants is beautiful and you want to eat the tomato. That's, that's the peak of it. When we're moving towards the new moon, which is n there's no light at all, okay? And that, by the way, is going to be coming on the 21st, and I'll talk about that in a second. The halfway point is like, we got to clear the fields because on the new moon, we plant the new seeds, okay? So the halfway point on the 13th, and this is this coming weekend, is basically going to be all about how we clear the field, the dead branches and the dead leaves and all of the stuff. We have to get the soil all ready and we have to till the soil and get it ready to be to be planted. So again, it's another, it's a minor moon phase, but it's a very important moon phase. Again, following along with the releasing theme. What do you want to release? You got to get rid of those leaves and those dead branches and stuff. If you want new things to come during the new moon, you got to get prepared and get rid of the old stuff. So this is a great time to purge closets, to get rid of like stuff, you know, junk in your car. Um, possibly friendships, possibly, you know, relationships and things like that. But even on a minor level, clear your desk, you know, anything that's that's kind of not working for you, get rid of old documents, shred things, you know, think releasing. So on the full moon, I told people last week, make a mini list of what you want to get rid of. Um, you know, you can say, I want to get rid of debt. I want to get rid of... Um, 
uh, clutter. I want to get rid of a bad relationship. I want to get rid of, you know, whatever thing it is. Maybe it's a feeling. Um, I want to get rid of uh, feeling sad uh, over a breakup. Or I want to, you know, I want to get rid of anger towards a child or an animal. Um, or, you know, whatever that may be that you want to get rid of. Like you want to focus on what it is you want to release. And so that's that's another midpoint is that 13th and that's next Saturday. Um, and so we have a lot of astrological energy around that time around the weekend. Again, we're still fighting for the dream, what it is we want. And, and, and this is a great time to pursue those creative fields, all of that creative stuff. I'm sorry, all you left brain people, but I tell you, we've been in the left brain so much. We've been in, in the Capricorn schedules and lists and, and to do things and, and all of the left brain stuff is all very logical. Okay. Nine to five left brain, like, you know, the logical level and the logical steps we're getting a little break right now this week with right brain activity, which is all the creative stuff. It's painting, it's music, it's art, it's spirituality, it's intuition. It's all the stuff that we, that, you know, it's like kind of, um, so if you are a professional musician, if you are a professional tarot card reader, or you are a professional minister, let's say, this is your time. This is your time. Okay, um, we've had a lot of Capricorn energy lately and that's very logical and it's very nine to five and it's very like, you know, systems and organization and all that stuff. And this week we're getting a little kind of a break from that and we're going we're going more towards now. I'm just going to give you a heads up. When Neptune is active, I cannot keep a schedule. I don't know what the thing is. It's just like something in my brain. Like there's a weird thing with time in Neptune. I, other people have noticed it. My clients, I'll be like, oh, Neptune's active today. So all y'all, when you see my, my posts on astrology updates by Gretchen Heidel or Instagram Gretchen Heidel or Twitter Gretchen Heidel or YouTube channel Gretchen Heidel, you will know if I say Neptune, think sleepy. Okay, because remember, it's like meditation, hypnosis, you know, um, <laughs> taking a nap, you know, it can be all of that stuff. It's very like hard to keep a schedule, hard to be on time. A lot of people oversleep when there's Neptune's active. They, they're they late for work. Um, oh God, this was due at three and it's already six. Uh, you know, it's all that stuff. So it's not great for left brain activities. Like I said, it's not great for all that logical schedule and lists and all that stuff. But, but God, do we always have to be so scheduled? It's just, uh, you know, I don't know. Some of the COVID stuff, I guess, um, is taking away some of that. I mean, you know, schedules are a little hard to come by maybe these days, but, but I don't know. It's time to drift. It's time to dream. A very, very famous Pisces by the name of Albert Einstein said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And I loved that quote by by that famous Pisces because he's right. I mean, sometimes we have to drift and dream. We have to allow our children to play. We have to allow our animals to play. We have to we have to get outside and connect. By the way, this is great for connection with gardens and growing things and um, starting to plant. It's like all that nature is all this Pisces stuff. So I know a lot of people that are Pisces rescue animals. I may be one of them, <laughs> just saying. Uh, I have my Pisces moon and yeah, I rescue animals all the time. So so this is the time to do all that stuff. It's not necessarily the time for super, you know, getting to the grind, but it's okay. It doesn't always have to be that way. So what I'd like to do is pull a card, um, a collective card, one card for everybody. But if you have any questions, now is the time. Or you can schedule a private astrological session with me and uh, go ahead and, uh, and we can talk about, you know, whatever. I mean, I have people come to me with all kinds of situations. I've had people come to me with medical uh, stuff. I've had people come to me for romantic, especially with this love detox. We, you know, a lot of romantic, uh, questions, career. I mean, you know, it's interesting what people have found, uh, when, when they come and they ask those questions. I mean, I literally, um, have discovered medical problems such as cancer in a person's body before even the doctors, okay, before their test even came back or before they were even tested, okay. Um, I've 
felt pregnancies. I have felt all kinds of things. And why, why would it be important to know some of those things if, if you wanted to know? Well, I always say forearmed is, you know, forewarned is forearmed. And so sometimes it's good to know, you know, obviously if you have a problem or if you have some, you know, cool, you know, maybe like a new baby or a new job coming or some kind of thing, then you can prepare. Hello, that's all good, helpful stuff. Okay, so Lori said, yes, imagine and it shall be. I love that. She's a Pisces, Miss Lori. <laughs> I love that Pisces energy. Amy, is there a new job or career coming for you? Um, I do feel that you have a new job or career. By the way, um, this Mars uh, Neptune thing is a good time to to start looking because you are Pisces and Mars is action. Remember Martin Luther King I was talking about had a lot of Pisces in his chart but he had that Mars connection to the Pisces which means not only did he dream the dream but he acted on it. So all right and Lori said thank you for encouragement to choose eating a more plant-based riot diet because you were right and Average of three months and your glucose went way down. See, yes, that is awesome. So see, I mean, yeah, readings are very helpful. <laughs> people, you know, I don't know. People sometimes call me and they think it's going to be entertainment or something. I don't know, but this is serious stuff. This is your life. And so if you want to know things like that, I mean, that's very important. I mean, that can help to save your life. That's a, that's a major thing. So, and yes, you can work with the energy. I mean, I don't know why we don't think it's free will, free choice, but we can work with the energy for sure. That is called free will, free choice, where you can make those decisions and, and it's all good stuff. I mean, you can really work with energies. And so, um, I like working with energies. It's fun. Okay. So what do you guys need to know collectively? I'm doing one card and then I'm going to answer Amy's questions. And if anybody else has one question um i can answer that live tonight but otherwise it will be signing off for the evening and i want you all to all to all the practice meditation if you guys can do any kind of practice this week try try meditating just even for one minute two minutes three minutes there's a great app called calm c-l-a-m uh, that can help you. There's many apps out there. There's there's different things that you can listen to, but I would love to have you guys just kind of take a deep breath and, and meditate. I, I just think it's a wonderful thing for your body, for your soul. Even if you have to do it in your car, just, just take a few moments to ground yourself. Okay, so I'm going to do card for Amy here. What does she need to know about finding a new job? What's very important for Amy to know about finding a new job? What does she need to know about finding a new job? Okay. Amy. Amy, Amy, Amy. You know, it's interesting because um, you, I happen to know um, Amy a little bit here. And um, <laughs> she got the card of yoga. By the way, Amy, these are the chakras here in this picture, yoga picture, okay? Your life is enhanced by yoga, stretching, and exercise, so this does mean that you need to move your physical body, but it could also mean doing something physical for a living. I happen to know that you do kind of, it's not yoga at all, but I know that you do kind of do things that are physical for a living, um, and your physicality uh, in a lot of your jobs, so that is a little bit about that, but also spiritual teacher. Which is interesting because I know also that you shared with me that you wanted to get more in touch with your own spirituality, your own intuition. And this um, says that either you need to take a class or, you know, hold a class. But spiritual teacher is, is another very good one. Amy, I definitely feel that you are going to be continuing to do a hodgepodge of different um, jobs. It feels like there's, it's like, I'm, I do here, do here, do here. And some of the jobs are coming back and returning. Remember, these are the retrograde times. So old things are coming back. Um, not to say that you're going to be doing that forever, but there will be old things recirculating through. And I also got something about accounting and bookkeeping too. I don't know if you need to do accounting or bookkeeping for yourself, or maybe you would do accounting or bookkeeping for others, but there is a uh, thing with, I keep seeing uh, numbers there. So I, I hope that helps Amy, but I see you doing a hodgepodge. It's not just one job. It's like a variety of jobs. Like there's a bunch of jobs, but it's coming. It's coming. Um, think old. Usually I don't say that for people, but think old, think, uh, 
jobs that you've already done. Think of think of past clients. Think of whatever. Think back, okay, and and call them and be like, hey, just checking in, see how you doing, you know. And a lot of people right now don't like to do what they perceive as being maybe like a sales call. Be a reluctant hero okay like say out loud like hey I know that this is a really like hard time for everybody I just wanted to to reach out and see if there was any way I can help you be a reluctant hero okay meaning that that's the best way to approach any kind of sales sort of calls right now or or whatever just be like oh I know it's really hard right now and I almost had to hesitate to call but I really wanted to know if there's anything I could do to help you out that's being the reluctant hero and you could really um get some good clients that way Hope that helps. Okay. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to do um, a quick card for everybody here. One card for the collective. Um, and Kate said something about she doesn't know what to ask. <laughs> okay. Let me do the collective card and see. One card for the collective. For what do you need to know about this week coming up, this this beautiful Pisces, the Neptune, what's the most important thing about this week that they need to know? People who watch this broadcast need to know. Oh my gosh. You guys know, if you've been watching me every week, you guys know that the cards just merely oftentimes reflect what I'm about what I've been saying the whole broadcast. Creative expression. <laughs> Just saying out loud. Creative expression, okay? So just mirroring what Gretchen is saying, and I'm mirroring what the whatever guidance, angels, Buddha, God, the universe. I, I don't have a name for that divine, beautiful, universal life force energy that I like to um, tap into while I'm doing the broadcast or when I'm doing my readings, but that's basically what the deal is. Create it's time to do creative expressions. Um this is not only speaking and talking creatively, but it's writing, it's emailing, it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, writing, it's poetry, it's, it's, it's uh, a song, it's, you know, any kind of way of like creatively expressing yourself. It's a beautiful thing. Yay! And it's time to be creative. Okay, so Hans, will I be moving soon? Gosh, Hans, I feel like you're pretty hungered down there. It is interesting because there's, um, I am getting a little bit of a, uh, yeah, I don't know about moving, moving, but there, it's interesting because I am getting a hit that's like south of you. Now it could be literally south in a neighborhood that just is south of you in, in that neighborhood, or it could literally be in the south. I mean, but I'm getting like under you or something. I don't know. I, it's hard to explain, but that's kind of what I'm getting as far as like location or some kind of thing. And I don't know if this is moving, moving, but you definitely are going on a vacation or some kind of a trip or something. Um, and so, and by the way, that looks very tropical to me. I'll just tell you that Hans, right? So there's a parrot there. Um, so I don't know if you're going on some kind of a trip or, or whatever, but there's some kind of a pool downward that I'm feeling. Um, but you feel very hunkered down. I don't know. I know you said you a question about moving, but I don't know about soon. We'll see. You have to let me know. I'm I'm iffy on that. So Hans, all right. So let me know how how that goes. <laughs> Yay, Andrea said here in time for the card. Yes, uh, creative expressions, Andrea. Which uh, I know you're very creative. So. Um, creative expressions, um, Hans went, Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting a pool. You have to let me know uh, what that could be, but there's some kind of a South of you feeling, um, uh, kind of wherever you live and then under you. So hope that helps. All right, everybody. It looks like, um, Oh, uh, Kate, Kate, I'll just pull a, uh, just one card for you. She said, I wanted to know something but I didn't want I don't know what to ask so I'm just gonna I'll just pull one card for you Kate just really quickly what does Kate need to know um she didn't she didn't know what to ask so what does Kate need to know we'll just channel the best possible thing for her 
Financial flow. Okay, so this is a question about money for sure. This can be positive or negative, obviously, but money is on your mind. There could be something with money, money coming up, and even receiving some money, like some unexpected aid, benefit, some sort of a thing. Um, you know, there's maybe government programs right now. There's some kind of a money uh, sort of thing that can help you, I feel like, you can come into aid or assistance or some sort of thing but money has been on the mind uh financial flow and also with this with this neptune pisces things what's your dream you know what's your dream everybody's being asked this week what is your dream and so if your dream is maybe hans maybe your dream is to live on uh, an island in the bahamas or something i mean you know i don't know you got the vacation card what's the dream and so kate um this is this is about oh no okay okay this makes a lot of sense okay so kate just posted while i'm talking here about there's some kind of assistance that's coming to her she just posted that someone stole her identity and she just found out today mm. okay kate glad you're on the broadcast i used to be a real estate agent um i was a real estate agent for 11 years a lot of people don't know this but often identity theft is covered under a homeowner's insurance policy or a renter's insurance policy a lot of people don't think to like even think of of accessing that um so that's basically that's basically what the deal is that you can get some sort of i mean obviously banks and credit cards and different things have different programs in place for them too but identity theft is definitely covered often under the homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance policies so hopefully you have those one of those two um, but that's really hard and a bummer. And they did did your t something from taxes and filed for unemployment. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's horrible. Okay, so Kate, I'm just gonna tell you that I am definitely getting that help is on the way. I'm really sorry all this. This is gonna be a nightmare. I'm, I'm sorry to say, like to figure all that out. But I do get this feeling that you have assistance coming to you. Okay, so just to let you know there is assistance on its way there is some recourse that you have you might even have to file a police complaint or something um but there does feel like there is assistance on the way but it's not going to be easy i can't even lie about that or say that but i feel like i feel like it's the thing um and so oh good uh, um andrea is is also giving you a helpful tip i love it when you guys talk to each other um, of how to deal with this but I will tell you that assistance is on its way from an intuitive standpoint I'll just let you know that okay it's it's hard but it feels like it comes so I hope that helps everybody tonight um, thank you so much for joining the broadcast I love being able to do this uh, I do this for free I do this every Friday or every Monday um, uh, I post it, I cross post it also on YouTube. So if you like my YouTube channel, that really helps me a lot. Liking the broadcast, sharing all of this with your friends is very helpful as well. Um, and, uh, if you'd like to, uh, ask me, um, any kind of a question in the form of a personal astrological session, please feel free to send me a direct message or even a text message. My phone number's all over the place. Um, GretchenHeidel.com is my website. I love all of you guys. Thank you so much. And remember, we're focusing this week on that love detox, on placing, um, uh, you know, what is our, what are our hopes and dreams and, and, and what do we love and how can we allow the love in? I know Kate's getting a lot of love from everybody right now. We're going to all send you a big love bomb, uh, Kate. We're going to give you lots of love so you can resolve this. And Kate, a good full moon uh, meditation for you would to be to be release you from all the hassle pertaining to that and you get a hundred percent recovery from any and all funds that you uh, have been robbed of so so that would be a wonderful meditation all right everybody love to you all hang in there we still are in the love detox and we have that beautiful last quarter lunar cycle coming next weekend so remember release 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 whatever it is you don't want all right See y'all next Monday night.